Warzone 3 is finally here and with that means that you're in new settings that you guys should be running in the game not only to get the highest frame rate the best visibility and the best graphical quality but also to make sure that you're the most accurate player that you could possibly be so I'll be going over the controller settings that you guys are going to need to change before you load up and play and also all of the graphics settings before we get into all of that if you guys gain any value from this video please consider dropping a like subscribing or sharing it with a friend I have a lot more tips tricks and guide videos coming out for warzone 3 so make sure you guys stay tuned for that with all of that out of the way let's get into the settings starting off with the controller most of your settings should have carried over from modern warfare 3 however some settings do get reset it's always a good idea to give your settings a once over so that way you know that they are 100 dialed into what you need so for me in my button layout preset i'm playing in tactical basically this allows you to drop shot more efficiently you're able to lay down with your right stick and then melee with circle uh bumper ping i play with off flip l1 l2 and r1 r2 if you guys are playing on a default controller without digital tap triggers i recommend that you go ahead and actually play flipped you'll have a better response time by clicking the bumpers because there's a shorter travel time to when they actually activate so this is a little tip for you stick layout preset i'm playing on default vibration i play with it off you can however play with it on i hear people say that it messes up their shot i used to play with it on up until maybe eight months ago and then i made the switch so it really does come down to personal preference dead zones is going to be a setting that is going to drastically change your gameplay for the better if you have them dialed in if you are having trouble with aiming staying on target or just feel like you're less accurate for whatever reason it could have something to do with your dead zones so if you want to test your stick dead zones you could do this you can see my left stick has a little bit of stick drift that goes off center just a little bit and my right stick is pretty much smack dab in the middle it doesn't really jitter too too much so for my left stick i go ahead and put it on one dead zone i'm always moving and if i do sit still sometimes i do move a little bit but it's nothing that it worries me too much and then the left stick maximum I have set at 50, which is half of what the maximum dead zone is at 99. This will allow you to get into the tax sprint faster, help your movement be more fluid. I've seen some people play with this as low as 30. I recommend doing it on 50. Uh, go ahead and give that a try. My right stick, I do have this on a three dead zone. Like I said, I don't have stick drift, but if I was going to have stick drift, a three dead zone is a safe bet. Obviously, if you guys do have stick drift, bump this up by one and then do test stick dead zone and see if your stick is moving at all if it is keep bumping it up until it isn't but three is what i'm playing at left and right trigger i have this set as one again you want to as responsive as possible getting into aiming lower sensitivity is typically what most of the high level players play specifically in the cdl and even on the warzone side of things a lot of warzone pros play on a very low sensitivity so for my horizontal stick and vertical i play on a six six sensitivity moving down my sensitivity multipliers are all default at one vertical aim axis i have all at standard uh, the aim response curve type dynamic dynamic is the response curve that gives you the most aim assist helps your aim out the most even some cdl pros have called to get dynamic actually ga'd in the pro league that's how good and broken this aim response curve is so highly recommend using dynamic most people are probably on standard it's gonna be weird at first when you switch to dynamic pretty much every single warzone pro plays dynamic if you guys haven't at least tried it go ahead and do that ads sensitivity transition time i have this on instant you want your sensitivity to change over as fast as possible it's going to give you the most consistency and fluidness in game i do run custom sensitivity per zoom i do recommend if you, again if you guys are feeling less accurate if you're feeling like aim assist is less go ahead and bump down your ADS sensitivity multiplier by 0 0.05. So typically I play 66.9 in MW3 and Warzone 3, I was having trouble staying on target. And so I actually bumped it down 0 0.05 and it made a world of difference. But if you guys wanna copy my sensitivities, they're here. If not, 
no big deal. Again, it's all personal preference at the end of the day. Target aim assist, obviously have that on. If you don't have it on, you'll definitely have a hard time staying on target. Uh, then you have your aim assist type. I play on default. I have heard good things about Black Ops. I haven't really given it a go in Warzone yet. In multiplayer, I did like the feel of it, but ultimately I ended up back on default. The ADS aim assist, obviously you want that on again. Motion sensing behavior, turn that off. And then I don't even know what's in the advanced settings. Getting into gameplay, automatic tax sprint. If you wanna be a movement demon, a certified Joe-o, if you will, you're going to want automatic tax burn on. Basically, it's going to make it so that way your character automatically tax burns as soon as you click forward on the left stick. Slide maintains sprint. Turn this setting on. Basically, after you're done sliding, you can go ahead and just sprint right out of it. It saves your left stick. If you have automatic tax burn on, it kind of doesn't really matter, but I have it turned on just because. Auto move forward. I have this turned off. There's not really a time where this comes in use for me personally. Um, tactical sprint behavior. I have this on tap to sprint. Ground mantle. You want to turn this off or grounded mantle you want to turn this off this will stop you from jumping uh over railing side mantling back mantling stuff like that this will save you in a lot of gunfights specifically ones near stairwells automatic airborne mantle again you want to turn this off you're gonna to have to click extra buttons obviously having these off you're gonna to have to kind of jump and then jump again once you want to latch onto something but it's going to be better in the long run automatic ground mantle and hang turn that off as well slide and dive behavior that put it on to slide only it makes the slide canceling and the movement in the game significantly better it gets rid of the weird delay where your controller's trying to figure out okay he's pressing the crouch button or the slide button does he want to dive or does he want to slide if you have it where you can do either it takes longer for the input to take place because the game's trying to figure out does he want to slide does he want to dive having it on slide only makes it instant the responsiveness is crazy it makes a massive difference in your movement in game i promise switch it to slide only go ahead and put plunging underwater i have this as free parachute auto deploy put this off this will allow you to parachute closer to the ground so that way you go ahead and are able to get to the ground faster you're not going to get in weird situations where you're kind of hanging out above an enemy uh with this being said if you're not used to playing with this off just be careful not to splat sprinting door bash you want that on, on ledge claiming you want it on mantle only aim down sight is hold change zoom activation as sprint tactical focus just for holding your breath in the sight equipment behavior on hold weapon mount all this is pretty much default you do want to change this to be short weapon mount exit delay you want everything as fast as possible in call of duty and with being as fast as possible it's going to be your looting this is going to be a game changer you have the interact slash re reload behavior most people probably don't remember that they even have to change this but you have to put this to prioritize interact if you want to just be able to tap square and loot things if you want to tap square switch weapons tap square to open a chest anything like that you want to have it on prioritize interact armor plate behavior i always have it as apply one i constantly am holding my triangle button if i have to put in multiple plates i'd rather be in control of kind of when i'm done plating and when i when i want to keep plating personally ads stick swap i have that on off backpack control directional buttons depleted ammo switches off uh c4 detonation i have it on one by one manual fire behavior put that as press vehicle camera recenter uh these are all kind of preference uh the lean out activation you obviously want that as melee i haven't tried it as ads it actually might be kind of nice might be something i try in the future but right now it is on melee and then these are the rest of the settings at the bottom getting into the graphics settings if you guys are on console this will help you out if you're having trouble with colors on the game or saturation you want it to be a little bit more vibrant which me personally i think it's already pretty vibrant but if you want it to be more vibrant and you're on console this is one of the few settings that you can change you can go ahead and go down to color if you go into the interface on the side you can go to your color customizations you can go down to your color filter settings and turn it on to the you know whatever filter you want but you see how it's changing the colors on screen and then set the color filter target to both and i found that filter 2 gives you the most vibrance the most pop again on console you are very limited to what you can do to kind of increase the color saturation but filter 2 will do that the best if that's what you're looking for another thing obviously have your mini map on square so that way you can see as much of the map as possible over there aside from your mini map being on square if you want to be able to see your mini map easier turn your hud bounds all the way to the lowest 
list. This brings all of the information that is typically on the corners of your screen and brings it towards the center. So you don't have to look up as far left and you don't have to look down as far right or left to see, you know, your ammo and weapon, your team's health, your mini map, your kill count, all that kind of stuff, stuff that you need in those clutch situations. All that information will be kind of closer to the center of the screen. Crosshairs, this is something that I think a lot of people have not changed either. With your crosshairs set to on, you see how that center dot kind of wiggles around and the crosshairs aren't static. They kind of shift around. So that center dot is actually sitting completely still in the center of my screen. The crosshairs are actually wiggling around that center dot. So if we go into our settings, go into our interface where we were, turn our crosshairs from on to static. This will make it so that way your crosshairs stay stationary. Obviously you wanna have the center dot on as well. This will help with your centering when you're trying to get on target. You see how all of that stuff is not moving anymore. The crosshairs are static and the center dot is static. It just makes it so that way if you're centering on targets long away or far away, it's easier or even closer. It's just, you can keep your, you kind of know where your weapon is looking at all times. All right, now getting into the graphic settings for all of my PC people, these settings come straight from the man, Oves. He is the PC optimizer of pretty much a lot, if not all of the Warzone scene. He always puts out the best possible settings to get the highest possible frame rate and these are the ones that i stand by and i use all the time i get phenomenal performance with them so i'm just going to run through them very quick obviously you want to have your screen refresh rate matched up to what your refresh rate is on your monitor brightness is one of those things that it is preference nvidia reflex low latency i have this on plus boost eco mode preset you want to have this on custom mine was on efficiency by default so double check that setting v-sync off v-sync gameplay and menus both are off custom frame rate you can set it to unlimited i like to limit my frame rate in the menu and have my gameplay frame rate match my monitor refresh rate uh moving on focus mode i have this on zero hdr turn that off getting into quality obviously you're gonna have it set on custom make sure your render resolution is at 100 dynamic resolution off the fidelity fx cas is basically sharpening in game this is gonna make your game pop looks so much better you're gonna be able to see targets easier if you have fidelity fx cas on and make sure it's turned up to 100 obviously you can turn it down if you don't like it that much but highly recommend you use it and you have it on 100 my vram scale target is at 80 variable rate shading is on texture resolution is going to be normal the texture filter is on normal depth of field is off detail quality level normal particle resolution very low bullet impacts i have these on persistent effects are off shader quality low on demand texture streaming is off if you do want your camos and other things to look better in game you can turn this on obviously it's going to be a hit to performance but your game's going to look better you kind of have to find the balance i personally play with that on but for the purpose of this video i have it turned off local texture streaming quality low shadow quality is on normal screen space shadows on low ambient on off green space reflections off static reflection quality low tessellation on near volumetric quality on low deferred physics quality off weather grid off water quality off now getting into the view it is important that you guys are playing on 120 fov if you want obviously this is going to reduce the visual recoil pretty much all warzone plays play on 120 all cdl pros between 95 and 105 so you kind of have to find what works for you but i do recommend playing on affected field of view and your weapon field of view to be on wide uh, same with your vehicle field of view. If it's on wide, you'll be able to see further around the side. So if you're three peeing around in a vehicle, you can see a little bit more. Make sure all of these match though, that your world motion blurs off, your weapon motion blurs off, your film grains on zero, and your first and third camera movements on 50%. Uh, you do want these settings to match mine exactly. These will make a world of difference in your gameplay. I pinky promise, bro. I promise, promise, promise. Inverted flashbang, you can use it. When I did use it, I felt like my monitor was turning off every time, even though it wasn't. So I have it as off. Getting into the audio mix, I am using home theater. It is preference what you guys want. And then in the master volume, make sure you turn off your cinematic music volume because in clutch moments, the cinematic music usually cuts on and will clog up your audio. So have that set to zero. Other than that, that's pretty much all of the settings. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to drop a like. If it helped you out at all, make sure to subscribe. Let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, guys, have a fantastic rest of your day.